I'm going to speed run you through the most important monasteries and Christian pilgrimage sites in Syria. Starting out, there's two things you probably didn't know about Syria. One is that around one in every ten people in the country before the war was Christian. And two is that many of the most important pilgrimage sites for Christians in the world are in Syria. So many Christians come here for pilgrimage every year. Starting out, this, this one is not actually that important for pilgrims, but it's probably the most famous monastery in all of Syria because it's built into this mountaintop and it was previously occupied by the Byzantines, the Romans at different points. Got to find about one kilometer of stairs to get here. It's called Marmusa, and you can see they have some very famous and delightful frescoes in this little mountaintop church here. Obviously, a lot of them were destroyed by the iconoclasts in the war, unfortunately. Now on to one of the real heavy hitters in the monastery scene is Sednaya Monastery, which has one of the four icons of Virgin Mary painted by St. Luke in the world, which was lifted from Jerusalem and placed in Sednaya. I'll let my Syrian friend tell you the origin story of the monastery now. They camped in this place, near this place, mm -hmm. and he wanted to go and find a place with water and he wanted to, like, to go to a place, but he found a gazal or a deer. This gazal, uh, or when Septimus Severus found, uh, found this gazal, he wanted to hunt this gazal, to kill him, and because he loves hunting. So he went after him, the gazal, until he, the gazal went to this place. And suddenly the gazal converted to be the Virgin Mary. Okay. And telling him, don't kill me, you are going to make this place a monastery. So he, you are not going to kill me, just say, yeah, but you are going to build a monastery in this room. He said, like, uh, of course, this is not possible. How the gazelle can convert it to be, like, of course, the Virgin Mary. So it is a legendary story. Um, so after that, he, he didn't know how to, to make or to build this monastery or the architecture or the style of this monastery. So he saw in his dream, again, the Virgin Mary telling him about the shape or how this monastery is going to be. So that what he believed. So he built this monastery, as I told you, in the 6th century and he put his sister in, uh, inside to, uh, to take care or to, to be the, the main leader of this monastery in, uh, in Saidnaya. So this place we call it Saidnaya. Saidnaya, it, it, it means like hunt because of the story that, that I told you. Um, now many people, as I told you, go and come to this place it is a pilgrimage place for all Christians all around the world because of the icon. We will see an icon, a very famous icon. I will tell you inside about the icon. We can't see it because it is dates back like many years before now. And you said you made four icons, where about the three? The, in different countries. So okay. this one used to be in Jerusalem, but uh, someone take this icon and give it to Justinian's sister. Wow, it's been here since Justinian. Yeah. Wow. Next up on the list is in Homs. It's called St. Mary Church of the Holy Belt. Actually, in order to evade persecution, the Christians dug a cave, as you can see here, underground beneath the church so they could worship. Anyways, this is the main church. They were excavating underneath the altar, and they found a belt wrapped up in a pouch with a description, a written description, very old, about what the belt was. And they said it was the Virgin Mary's belt. As you can see, the paintings were destroyed again by the rebels. And you can see here, discovery of the belt, the bishop holding the holy belt. They bring it out every year for a celebration, and that's the belt itself. Pretty small, but I guess supposedly St. Mary's belt, so very, very important. Next up, we're in Malula now, which was destroyed at the war, you can see. And we're going to the Petra of Syria. It's called the Convent of St. Thecla. St. Thecla is not super well known in the West, but over in the Middle East, she's very famous. She was a disciple of St. Paul, I believe. She wanted to be a Christian. She was from a very high-class pagan family. And she ran away to pursue Christianity. Of course, the, uh, the Romans chased her and they wanted to kill her. But... When she arrived in Malula, 
she reached this giant rocky formation, and supposedly, according to the legends, the rocks split open in half, and she was able to go freely to a safe place, which is now the convent of St. Thecla. And you can see here, walking through this little mountain area, it's very similar to Petra, for those of you who've been. It looks actually almost the exact same. Anyways, when you get there, you have a beautiful view of the convent itself. This is a very major pilgrimage site for Christians. Interestingly, when we were on the way here, I saw something pretty funny slash unfortunate. They were filming a bunch of Syrian kids, this Russian group, a very high-end documentary group with like film cameras, TV cameras, all of that. And they were putting on makeup on their faces to make them seem very dirty. I don't know what happened with that, but interesting to see. Anyways, again, destroyed during the war, all the Christian frescoes and mosaics, unfortunately. And then when you get up into the mountain, you have a beautiful tree and a nice little church where you can hang out. And to close out the video, I'll include here an Aramaic prayer that one of the uh, nuns at the Church of St. Mary's Belt said, because they still speak Aramaic there, the language of Jesus.